Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Bruce McLean, uh, Associate Curator here at um, GOMA. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce this afternoon um, a Torres Strait printmaker and artist, um, Alec Tapoti. Um, Alec will be presenting a uh, talk in a few different parts, um, and it'll also be um, a movable feast as well. So halfway through, I think, we'll be moving to the other gallery to look at some of the other works. Um, so please, everybody, uh, make Alec feel welcome. Check one, two, Kapukut. Debbie Gerger, Kapukut, good afternoon. My name is Ali Chipoti, um, and this is my work, whom you're probably all familiar with. My um, Milagas, where I come from, Zenatkes, Torres Strait Islands. We call this the Australian mainland, Zaydagam Daudai. At this very moment, I up put in, I la kapas in. Kawa mapai gal, kawa gal. I eso puking itumun lagnu siaika. I thank you all for being here, the Aboriginal people of Australia, and I acknowledge you for my time here today. Eso. I sort of had to write a small um, uh, notes, a couple of notes this morning. Um, had a late night last night, but I managed to get up early and. You know, ask my forefathers to be with me today because I'm a very spiritual person and, um, and I'm so proud to be a Torres Strait Islander, especially today. Now, first, uh, that chant, I wanted to open it up with a chant. That's an ancient chant. And I must acknowledge that I first heard that chant that was recorded by Dr. Jeremy, B Jeremy Beckett, I think he's in the crowd somewhere. There he is, in the 1950s, late 60s. Yes. And, um, um, I had the privilege to meet him when I was at uni and he gave me some cassettes and I shared some with some elders and they sang to me and they taught me that chant. So I'm very blessed to speak my language and understand the meaning behind the chant. Now, the chant, We were sent here. Now I'm not talking about two people, they're talking about two parties. It's not myself and art viewers, it's Torres Strait work and art viewers. So I thought I'd put that in there just to, you know, welcome everyone in a, in a chant um, in my language of the Kalalagawea Nation. Now, um, I just want to firstly touch on, well, obviously, I'm like my cousin Dennis. We're from the same community, from the same island, from the same genealogy. I'm also a printmaker. We went to TAFE together, and uh, we went to uni together. And I'm probably recognized for printmaking, but. I've actually moved away from printmaking just a little bit, and I'm con now concentrating on um, masks, sculptures that I create, but um, I'm gonna wait till everyone see when I launch it in August this year at the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair. So for those of you who are gonna be there, you're most welcome to come to my exhibition. Um, the exhibition is gonna be called Mawal Adas Parul, Faces of the Sorcerers. Now, um, I think, uh, I think what I want to share here today, this morning, is language. I think it's very important for us as Torres Strait Island people, especially for those of us who are born and bred on the islands. We speak our language. I am 35 years old, and um, I am blessed that my father and my grandfather and my uncles have taught me the language, and I speak it fluently. I know ancient words, and I'm so proud of it because I think that is the core of the culture, and that helps me put something on the wall like this. Interpretation of a calendar, which I, got, I saw uh, when, Haddon first, uh, uh, when Haddon first documented it, and then later I think I've seen it in um, Esley's notebook by Dr. Anna Schnuckel and Rod Mitchell, 
And I thought, I'm going to try and put that in a imagery format, if you could say. And this is what I came up with. Um, to understand this particular work, on the bottom border, there's circles. Those represent the moons. Kisai, or Mulpal, we call it in the Western Island language. And that is the calendar of, well, climate change is a bit different today, but this was my interpretation of the calendar. These people here, they represent the Zugubal, the wind creators. They control the wind, the weather. And you guys are probably most familiar with the dances you've seen outside about Zugubal. Now, Zugubal are spiritual ancestors, star constellations. And um, I know a lot about star constellation, but I'm just going to tag on a lot of other things today because um, I, I'm not sure how much time I have here today. But um, yeah. So apart from my printmaking, um, I want to talk about um, art in general. I think it's very important that, like myself, I also speak English, obviously. Um, and I understand exploitation. I understand misinterpretation. And I think it's very important that artists of today, especially from the Torres Strait, are educated that they do not misinterpret. They have to know if they have the right to interpret and present it in a format like this. And um, basically, it's falling back to the cultural protocols that have been handed down from our elders. Um, yeah. And there's two, two, um, two, I suppose, two ways of how to go about things, personally, how I see it, is there's the general knowledge. Things, information about my culture I can share with anybody, everybody. And there is the specific knowledge, certain things that I cannot, not only um, maybe because I'm not allowed to, but I have to abide by the cultural protocol not to interpret, not to share, because it is sacred to my people and my people only. Now, just going back to Zenat Kes, Zenat Kes is our language term for Torres Strait. Now, obviously, we're known today as Torres Strait Islanders after Captain Torres, um, when Captain Cook, Captain Torres, when we discovered them, um, when they came through the Torres Strait. They didn't discover us, we definitely discovered them. We have um, nations within our nations. The Gudamalwilgal is the top western people. To the north, near the coastal line of New Guinea, the Saibai Bui Guduan, Gudamalwilgal. And uh, that's the top western people. People of the sea, Ugulmuki Mabaigal. Now, I am, my mother is from Saibai, and I speak proudly because that's my motherland. My answer, my, I, Tipoti, I am from Badu, and my ancestral line lie back to Mobyag. I am a Malui League from Maluilkal Nation. That is the Midwestern, Mua, Mabuyag, and Badu. And also, I, we all, in my art practice, professional practice, I al always acknowledge the Kulkalgal, the Central Island people, and the uh, Meriam Kemer Kemer Nation to the east, where we all know about Mabo, and, um, and also not forget the Kaiwalagal, which is the Kaurareg nation. Those of you who've been to TI, that is the nation of the Kaiwalagal, the Kaurareg people. So that is where I stand, that's my identity, and um, like I said, I'm probably gonna repeat it a couple of times. Yesterday and today, I am so proud to be a Torres Strait Islander. Thank you. With my work today, I'm a very spiritual person. Like I mentioned before, I, um, I, I practice, I've, I've, I've experienced, I've been through, I've had my first shave, which is a first initiation. I had it through my mother's side, from the people of Saibai. We call it Ubupatai. And that's when you initiate you from a boy, you not only become, you, you, you're almost halfway to becoming a man, and after that, the next initiation is Zugmurpai, which is practiced today, to this very day, and very strong all along the Western Island. That's when you spear your first dugong and your first turtle, which is the main food source for our people. I speak very proud of that because I am heavily, heavily involved in uh, dugong and turtle management in my country, and um, I, I know my rights. I always get involved in land and sea management, and um, 
and I'm always, always uh, fired up to preserve my cultural practices. And I think nothing is going to take that away from me. And like many other artists, we tell that information through our work because um, uh, we have dancers, obviously, and we have linguists, people who, you know, special in different, different areas. And myself, I think I've been, you know, blessed enough to be, to earn the title of uh, become one of the um, uh, leading artists for the Torres Strait Islands. Um, thank you. I flagged on a bit of, um, when, you, when, I was, uh, when I mentioned cultural protocols when it comes to art. Um, misinterpretation is a very big thing to me because to me, when we see the sketches or the illustrations in the document of Margaret Laurie, um, these were interpretations by artists. They have a better, more clear understanding of the ancient life, like more better than us, because we are young. In our head, we also know English. I used to know a bit of Japanese, and I, I've had the opportunity to play Nintendo 64. But um, the people back then, in that era, they were, um, their knowledge or their uh, interpretation was, um, I say, stronger than us. But what we're trying to do is uh, close the gap. And I'm very pleased and blessed to have met um, Sigar Pasi, who's one of the uh, living uh, illustrators, artists from that um, project. So, um, yeah, thank you. Misinterpretation. I must say that many of you probably heard of the legend of Kuyam. Now, Kuyam was a headhunter from Mabuyag. Mighty Kuyam, the legendary Kuyam. Adi Kuyam, we call it. Now, Kuyam, I must say, is nowhere near the cartoon character of the Incredible Hulk. Now that is a misinterpretation. We can talk about abstract, but I must say, when it comes to uh, documenting or, or um, interpreting uh, island legends such as Kuyam, I think we have to be very careful. Um, for this, this is across the board because myself, personally, I believe that I always have to respect the forefathers before me. I also make headdresses, very. I, also, I make masks. To me, they're not as powerful as the ones that are seen in the Awakening exhibition because those masks were handled by my, our forefathers, the Torres Strait Island forefathers. Um, and, um, and, and, and I am, you know, that's my inspiration. That's where I'm, I'm trying to, well, I'm hoping to revive that and bring that back into, into the community. That's actually my um, new dire direction, is mask making. But um, recently, a couple of weeks ago, I've just signed my latest print. It's called Girelal, which means dances, not as in the performers, but the performances. And it is a 1.2 wide by eight meters. So probably from there to there. And that's going to be on show at my exhibition in uh, Cairns. So, like I said, if you're there, you're most welcome to come to my exhibition. Thank you. I also really, really um, encourage and believe in community support. Recently, I uh, created seven masks to take back to the island of Badu for the dance team to have and, and, and revive you know, the dance performances. Um, that's my alarm going off. I think it's 2.30, time to pick up the kids from school. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> better turn it off. Anyway, um, distraction there. Um, yeah, so I think it's very, very important, regardless if you live on the North Pole or the South Pole, you connect with your community because we are the keepers of the land. They're there. You might be a traditional landowner living in Melbourne. You own that land. You have a family. They're looking after it. It's very important that we stay together, connect in spirit and physically as well. I mean, we all got mobile phones, so yeah. Thank you. Another thing um, that I also want to mention is um, with my uh, status today, I am really supportive of young and old artists. My two most uh, inspiring um, artists or artifact makers are 
you've heard the talk before, Ken Taidei. Um, he probably doesn't know this, but he inspires me the most because he's there every day working on his, you know, doing his mask and his artifacts. And, and, and I haven't actually um, told him that yet, but he is one of my biggest inspiration. And also around the corner is another uncle from Saibai by the name of Alson Edric Tabwai, a performer. He does the Mawa mask around the side. He's from my mother's side. And um, he is also one of my really, really big inspiration. Um, Myself and Dennis Nona, you all know Dennis, we go way back. Um, we had some wild times at uni, but it was good. Um, I was, I was, I can say that he was the leader. I was behind him. <laughs> so he'll take all the credit for the good and bad. <laughs> Maybe I'll take some credit for the good. Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I, I really acknowledge, I mean, today I've, I've come down and, you know, I've got the bad, uh, uh, the, the artist from Badu Island, where I'm from. I'm one of the di directors on the Badulgao, um, Muro Badulgao Kutinao Mood, Badulgao Kutinao Mood um, Art Center, Badu Island Art Center. And um, we have, you know, young emerging artists uh, um, represented here tonight, today. today. And, um, and also, I, I really support, you know, Gab Titui. They've been there from the beginning. I mean, art, as all artists would know, art life is not easy financially, and you know, Gabti Tree has always been there since the beginning. I mean, even if it's from $300 to 13 grand, you know, they've always been there for me, and um, I support them in any way I can. And also, I always acknowledge um, Eru Berwer Meta because I think it's a fantastic thing that came up. And, um, you know, the, the, I think the lady who start, started it, or, you know, one of the founders there was, uh, was, came up with the idea. Um, to start that center was, my, was actually my first TAFE teacher, Lynette Griffith. I think she's here somewhere. I've seen her somewhere. No? There she is. That's my very first TAFE teacher. <laughs> so I try and acknowledge everyone. You know, from Lynette, I went to Anna Iglesias. She was at the TAFE and she, you know, myself, you know, a lot of artists came through her. And then I ended up at, at, um, in Canberra at the Australian National University. But... Um, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, as for me, that's me. And, I um, mean, you know, I, I, I suppose I, um, I will always speak my language. I think that's the main thing. And I'm very proud of it. And, uh, you know, I, I help. I, I, I teach. I'm not a teacher. I, don't, I, I did, I did um, post-grad in education. But I couldn't handle the kids because it was very different from my time. I only had six months left of prac. Then I had to do two trips overseas for art. Then I thought, man, I'm not, maybe I'm not for teaching in, you know, teaching in education. I, maybe, you know, so I went to, you know, I did a performance over in, um, in the US somewhere in West Virginia somewhere. I can't remember. Um, but that was back then. And, um, and yeah, but I, 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 I'm very um, aware that the generation to come, um, they might not know the language. So I've took it upon myself to teach through Facebook. Everyone knows Facebook. I, slap in a couple of words and translate it. And I've had massive, um, you know, response, you know, people saying that you should be a teacher language. I'm not a linguistic, I've just sat with many. I've, some of the, some of the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fourth year students, linguist students at Canberra were experimenting on me and that's how I learned how, how the, you know, the structure of language and that's why I became interested. I did genealogies and linguists as a side sort of study because I thought it was important for genealogies, I have to know that if I am the right person to interpret this. I have to know that am I from the right family tree. And for linguistic, I have to make sure I capture the right pronunciation to spell my language. Our language is not a written language, it's in English alphabet, um, but um, we, you know, our vowels are different from the English A-E-I-O-U, ours is A-E-O-U. So I've come to understand the really deep basics of, 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 of the structure of language and I, I try in any way I can, even through my printmaking, to teach that. And um, I think that also will help artists, you know, come about in maybe um, learning the language because, I mean, I believe that singing and dancing, traditional contemporary dance with the language is the best medicine to learn the language today because otherwise I'm competing with, you know, Kids going to school every day, five days a week, but um, I can't think of I, uh, I can't think of any more to say, anything else to say. But if there's any question, please.
Well, in saying that, I must, as a, you know, to me, that chant, it, um, I ask for my ancestors to be with me. And um, in closing, I would like to close it with a, a song as well. A song. So, 